So, what are you guys, Mormons? What's your stance on abortion? Wait, 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 it's not politics. What do you mean you don't get into politics? You don't start, do you, do you call for the abolishment of abortion? Abolishment, like, end, 100%, no, absolutely abolish it, 100%. Yeah, it's not, it's not allowed, it's, but do you guys do anything in the Mormon whatever to work towards the abolishment of abortion? I know, I know, but do you do you guys mobilize, go out in front of abortion clinics? Do you do anything like that? Do you call your representatives and tell them that they need to abolish abortion? Uh, we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's a way that we don't expose. Yeah, but why not? I mean, if you were living during during Nazi Germany, and they there was an oven not far from here, Auschwitz was far not far from here, and somebody said to you, "Sir, do you want to stop the ending of the slaughter of the Jews?" What would you say? Okay, what would you have done during that time? Yeah, I uh, I don't really want to get into this. But no, why not? Because these are these are human beings right in our midst that are being slaughtered, and yeah. people don't care. So what's, do you know what the official, I mean, does the Mormon church do anything as far as working towards the abolition of abortion? I mean, it's great to preach the gospel. I, I'm here preaching the gospel as well. And I'm a Christian, so, you know, I, I preach the true gospel, not what you guys are preaching, first of all. And second of all, the Bible does say that we are to be the voice of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8, we need to be the voice of those who are being led off to slaughter. And so if you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you should preach about the abolition of abortion. So I want to challenge you on that. To, to well, you know, to, to work towards the end of abortion. Okay. Norman, what's yours? Elder. Okay. Well, you know, I love, what are you doing in the Mormon church? Like, were you raised Mormon? Yes, sir, I was born in the church. Okay. I mean, you know Joseph Smith was a, a huckster, don't you? He was, re he was arrested for being a huckster. A what? A huckster. Uh, like, he, he would trick people and he would take money from people. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I've heard all, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And, and then uh, Joseph Smith claims that he received another revelation from God from what? The angel Moroni. Right? So, I mean... So you don't believe in sola scriptura. You don't believe that the Bible is the final authority for all our works, our faith, our practice, or anything. No, sir, it never says that in the Bible. Sure it does. I mean, the very, the very last verse of the Bible says that. You know, who wrote that? Who wrote Revelations? John. Revelation. It's not Revelations. Yeah. yeah. It's John the Apostle. Yeah. And so when it's closed, the canon was closed. And so anybody that adds to it, what happens? I mean, the Catholic Church does it. You have the Bible, and then the Catholic Church adds to it the Apocrypha, the Magisterium, and all that. Here we have the, the Mormons, and they add the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price. We got the Muslims, they add to it the uh, Quran and the Hadiths. And so the common denominator amongst all of those are people that have added to the Word of God. So I want to challenge you. What, what's your first name where you don't give first names? No, this is, this is my title. I'll be okay. So I want to challenge you. Sola Scriptura means we believe in the Bible alone. And as soon as you add something to it, that becomes the way that you interpret what the Bible says. But the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the Bible, the, the Word of God is quick and powerful. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. You see, so now you've added something to the Word of God. And so what is salvation in the Mormon church? What is salvation? Yeah, how are you saved? What does salvation mean? Yeah, well, we, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what okay, what does that mean? Is faith, repentance, baptism, etc. But what does that do? I mean, why does it work? It, well, it, it's personal, right? And so the gospel, as you live the gospel of Jesus Christ, helps you become more like Jesus Christ. Okay, how? One day, how? Yeah. Through the, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. How okay, and... The Holy Spirit is who or what? You believe in the, in the Trinity? Uh, I believe what the Bible teaches that there's one God, three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that they are all co equal. Absolutely. Okay. We would just, we would just agree on that. But you disagree because you've, you're looking at it through the lens of the Mormon Bible. Do you understand? It's not the Mormon Bible, we still believe in the Bible. 
Yeah, yeah but, but, you're, but you're interpreting, oops, sorry about that, sorry about that. But you're interpreting the Bible through the lens of this supposed document that Joseph Smith got from this angel on gold tablets. Where are they? There's no evidence, there's no proof of this. Where, where are these tablets? Is there any is there any proof of the original scriptures Absolutely. Of the Bible? Absolutely. Qumran would be one of them, the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's all kinds of manuscripts that are in full agreement. There's over like 2200 various manuscripts of the New Testament. So we can piece together what the original manuscript said, but you can't do that. It's it's the same thing as the Quran. So I just I, I think I think you're in a cult. And I, I know that you're trained, you know, you're you're out here doing that. I mean, they're a cult too. The Jehovah Witnesses, they do the same thing. They got the teachings of what's the guy's Russell's name, and they believe in the Watchtower. It's the same thing. And so, don't doesn't your basic theology teach that God was a man at one time, and then He eventually attained to a form of deity, and that then He created all this world, and that you eventually will be your own God and have your own planet. Do you believe in eternal progression? From okay. Sunday progressed to, to be to be like God. You know? So we're but not to be God. We will not be replace God Himself. We'll be like no, God. but you'll be your own God. We will be a God. Yeah. Okay, you are going to be a God. Yes, sir. Eternal progression. I mean, think about that. Yeah. You you are claiming you can't get that from the Bible, because the Bible says very clearly in in um, Exodus. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of heaven or earth. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain and so forth. Hey, watch my book, sir. Um, so, where do you get that from the Bible? I, I'm not for sure on that. I'm, I'm reading the New Testament right now. I'm only 19. I haven't, I haven't got through the Old Testament. Uh, okay. And I, I don't say necessarily that it's in the Bible. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. So that's why, that's why the but do you see what I said now? I, exactly, and that's my point. As soon as you have another document, that document ends up being dominant over the Bible and you start interpreting it through that lens. And so biblical Christianity, Reformed Christianity, says sola scriptura, which says this is the word of God alone. And we only go by the Bible. And anybody that tries, like it says in the end of Revelation, I mean, just now, look at it. I'd actually like to go back to that verse. Yeah, let's look at it. So it's, as soon as you start adding to the Word of God, you get all kinds of you know wild interpretations like Jehovah Witnesses have, or the the uh, Muslims have. Uh, man, this is hard with this wind. Let me put this down. So you know I, I care about you, and that you know you have the your family probably is in it, your friends are probably in it, but it's going to lead you to hell. It's going to lead you to hell because the only way we can be saved is by Jesus Christ who is fully God and fully man, as the Bible teaches. And to do anything, believe in anything else than that, any other, oh yeah, yeah, this is hard. I can pull up on my phone if you like. No, I got it. Okay. okay. If anyone takes away from the words of this book, or the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city which are written in this book. He who bears witness to these things says, I, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, so obviously, you know, that was written by John. Yep. And you know that obviously the New Testament isn't written in chronological order. Right? Yep. I do know that. And so that book of Revelation is actually written before most of the books of the New Testament. No, that's not necessarily true. I, I, no, I don't. I don't. I, I don't think that the scholarship bears that out. All scripture is God breathed. Yeah. and profitable for teaching yeah all right so that's what i'm doing with you the word of god is profitable for teaching for reproof for correction for training in righteousness so i'm doing i'm teaching you reproofing you correcting you and training you in righteousness because it doesn't say the the book of mormon is the scripture this is that this is the scripture now, i want to mention the book of mormon in that what's that it wouldn't have mentioned the book of mormon in that book of course it wouldn't it was happening on another continent they would have no idea of how to know that there's another group. But don't you find it suspicious that all of a sudden there's a book, some guy that was a charlatan gets this, we don't have any of the golden tablets, and that, it, it, that um, it's teaching a gospel that's contrary to this? I mean, it's very contrary to it. It's not contrary, it's the same gospel, it's not contrary, it's not contrary. I have a connection with this group. Yeah, sure.
it's hard with the wind. Yeah. I mean, you could pull it up on your phone too if you want to. That's that could be easier. Okay. So do you know like the like the backstory of what the Book of Mormon is? Of what we believe a little bit. To be? A little bit. I've read okay. I've read portions, not all of it. I to, to, okay. you know, I just couldn't get through it. I, I just so, go ahead. So yeah, like I mean just like a quick backstory to kinda of understand the context of, of why I'm using this verse. Okay, which verse are you using? Uh, verse sixteen. Okay. And I also have other sheep yeah, you can read that. which are not from the fold. Okay. Yeah. So what we believe is that there, there's a family, there's a, a prophet named Lehi in, in Jerusalem. And he had, he had his family, and as we know, this is it's happening at the same time as the Bible. Okay. And he received a vision from, from God saying that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. And that okay. he him and his family to, they basically got to leave. Okay. Right? And so they ended up, they, they build a boat. Uh, his son, who also becomes a, a prophet as well, okay. they build a boat. They sail across, and they land in, in Ancient America, basically. We don't okay. know whether that's North America, Central America, South America. But and how do you know this? Because of because of the Book of Mormon. Okay. Wouldn't be any other way. Okay. And so, anyways, as the these people, as, as they grow up, they divide into two separate groups, and it covers about a thousand year period of 600 um, before Christ and 400 after Christ. Okay. And so, anyways, after Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected in Jerusalem. We know that he also visited this, this people. The, the how do you know? Oh, from the Book of Mormon. Yes. Sir. See, do you see how you're putting on the lenses of the Book of Mormon, and now you're interpreting the Bible through those lenses? Do, do you see how you're doing that? Rather than letting this be the lens that you interpret the Book of Mormon, yeah. and if you use this as your lens, you're going to say that's a bunch of junk because you're getting information that is just not here in the Scripture. So you've added to it. Yeah, I, I would ask you, how would you interpret that scripture right there? Oh, it was very simple. Yeah. And I also have other sheep, which are the Gentiles. The Gentiles are those other sheep. They're not of the fold of Israel. I mean, we have the consistency that Jesus Christ came to the lost sheep of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are other sheep that are going to be brought into the fold. In the, and we have that in the book of Acts, during the book of Acts, where the Holy Spirit, the person, the Holy Spirit, not the force of the Holy Spirit, came and and um, brought the Gentiles into the church by saving them through Christ. Yeah. Okay. So, so you t that's called exegesis. Exegesis means like the word exit. You pull out of the Scripture what's there. The consistency of a Reformed biblical Christian, Calvinistic Christian, is that you start with sola scriptura. You, you pull out of it what's there, and the Bible interprets you rather than you go and interpret the Bible. Eisegesis is where you take a preconceived notion like Islam, like Jehovah Witnesses, like Mormonism, and you take that lens and you read into the Bible things that are not there. And that's a very dangerous thing to do. Your soul is in jeopardy if you continue on because you're circumventing the gospel of who God is, who Jesus Christ is, and what he did on the cross. Biblical Christianity would hold Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, came into this world fully God and fully man. It's called the hypostatic union of Christ. He kept the law of God perfectly. And when he went to the cross, the wrath of God the Father was poured out. The justice that I deserve for my sin was poured out upon Jesus Christ so that he becomes my substitution. You know, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the lamb, the the, uh, the sin of the world. So that's how we're saved in biblical Christianity. How are you saved in Mormonism? I, I already mentioned how we were saved. It's the living gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Is that is that by faith alone, or is there works that go along with it? I mean, just like it says, how it says in Ephesians, faith mm -hmm. without acts is death. Yeah, book of James, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't think so. Because actually in Ephesians, let me let me read the verse that, that I think was kind of in your mind. For by grace you have been saved through faith in this faith. That's what the antecedent of that is. And this is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one may boast. So there's no works that we could add to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's so, pure grace. 
do you believe, do you believe in baptism? And so once you're baptized, and then... Um, I don't believe in baptismal regeneration. I do believe that the Bible does say that baptism is the sign of the covenant that we have with God, and that brings us into the visible church. It doesn't guarantee that we're brought into the invisible church. Do you know what I mean by that? Okay. So the invisible church would be those who are truly saved, but the visible church are the sheep and the goats together, the wheat and the tares. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it says in John 3, 5, so, right. We preach, and that's what we help people do as missionaries and people to Jesus Christ. Okay. I, I understand that any anyone you know coming, we deal with people that are you know that are new. They don't know anything about our church, mm -hmm. and we have to. There'd be simply no way to convince any one of the truthfulness of the book of Mormon. That's simply not our job. But we depend on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit will only come unto you. And who? You know, what? What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. What? What or who? It's the third member of the Godhead. Okay, what does that mean? So, is the Holy Spirit a person? It is not a person, it's a spirit. Okay, so the, the Holy Spirit is not a person, it's a spirit. What, I, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. So, you, do you believe in the, the Trinity? There's one God and three persons, and these three persons are co-equal. Yeah, we believe that there's God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. They're, they're one in intention, but they're three separate persons. One in intention. So, is is the Holy Spirit God is the same as the as as much as the Father is God? Like equal to it? Yes, to Him. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, they're all equal. Okay, but He's not a person. He's just a spirit. What's the difference? Well, a person, a person. I mean, when I feel the Spirit, I feel the Spirit when I read the Bible. I feel the Spirit when I read the, the Book of Mormon. Okay. And it's that same Spirit. It's the. I mean, we read about the fruits of the Spirit in the Bible. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly what verse, but it talks about the burning of their bosoms, right? Okay. When Jesus Christ is yeah. performing the Luke ch chapter 24. Yeah. 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 And so that this is the spirit. That wouldn't be possible for a spirit to, to be inside of me and be inside of you and everyone if there was a person. So that's why... That's okay. Why yeah, I mean, uh, certainly we believe, as Christians, we believe, I believe that the Holy Spirit is a person and He is the spirit. There's no question about that. The fact that he's a spirit doesn't mean that he's not the per third person of the Trinity. So, so how are your sins? How are your sins atoned for? Like, what what is Jesus on the cross, and what did he do? As far as a Mormon is concerned, what what's the point of the cross? What's the point of the cross? All the back, the point of the cross, and why Jesus Christ was ever even sent to this world mm. was the fact that we were going to confront two major obstacles to be able to return to our Father. Okay. And that was the physical death. Okay. And we're all going to die, and that was also spiritual death. Okay. And so Jesus Christ was sent to this world to redeem us from physical death as well as, as, well as spiritual death. What about death. sin? What about sin? Yeah, what about sin? Like, yeah, that's part of spiritual death. Okay. So as we okay. sin, we, our, our souls are damaged, and it's okay. only recovered through, through Jesus Christ and his, and his and sacrifice. Okay. So Jesus is not God. No. Okay. What, who, what or who is he? He's the, he's the son of God who God sent to fulfill his, his will and his plan. But not co-equal with the Father. Yeah, I would, yeah he's, he's co-equal. He's just okay. simply not the same person. Okay, I mean, yeah, I, I could see that in Christian terms. You could see that, that he wouldn't be. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross and he spilled his blood, did he take the wrath of God that you deserve upon yourself for the sins that you've committed? Could you repeat that question? So the wages of sin is death. And, you know, like in the beginning of the book of Romans, it talks about God, pour, you know, we're, we're under God's wrath. Like even in John chapter 3, at the end of chapter 3, it talks about being under God's wrath. Let me see if I can find it. The wind makes it tough. Do you guys, you know, what, how would you define sin as I'm looking for this? I'm curious. We would define sin as, as anything that... Anything that, that offends the spirit. Okay. Obviously, we have, we have the commandments. We have the ten commandments that we go by. Okay. Uh, and we also have the modern revelation, other great commandments that we follow. Okay. And as we even, I mean, obviously, as we break these commandments, that would be considered a sin. Okay. There's also a difference between sin and transgression. Okay. So what we know of as Adam and Eve, that right. was a transgression because they were they were as kids, they were considered Okay. So that was what we would have Okay, okay. I won't get into that with you. Uh, 
The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So the wrath of God means that we deserve eternal hell and punishment and separation from God. And Jesus Christ, being fully God and fully man, interceded for us and died upon the cross. And when he died upon the cross, he took the wrath of God upon himself so that we then could be proclaimed innocent and forgiven. I'm, I'm curious, like, is anything that I'm saying, like, not in line with, with Mormonism? Because I, I don't really know Mormonism that well. Yeah. Um, one thing that, that we would, are you saying like in just your previous statement? Or yeah, yeah, just like what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. What would you say would you disagree so, with? What we believe is, like in the afterlife, mm -hmm. uh, so if I understand you right, you're saying that we are under God's wrath and that, I mean... And, and once we're in Christ, we're not. Once we're in Christ, we're not under God's wrath. So the wrath of God when has been taken Christ away. Savior, yeah, when you trust in Christ, I don't like the accepting thing. That's kind of like the easy believism, you know, I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. But to trust in Christ alone for your salvation, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess what we, what we believe is when that children are, are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So I know that. I don't automatically, know. like an aborted baby will automatically go to heaven? Is that what you mean? Yeah, the baby didn't be and take the decision to, okay. to be born into this life. Okay, so you don't believe in any kind of form of original sin, so that, that we have died in Adam and we have sinned in Adam. No. Nope. What about, what do you do with the book of Romans then? Because it specifically says in Romans chapter 6 that in in Adam all died. I mean, read, read the book of Romans and really study that book. I would, I would encourage you. I, this is, we could go back and forth all day. This is, and, and I'll give you a, this is what you would like me to do okay. and think about. And I'll, I'll say this. I would like you to really take time to know this book first before you go to that book. I mean, know this, even the, I would say even the book of Romans. Really study the book of Romans and understand the book of Romans and then get the, the lens here really clear and then go look at the Book of Mormon. That's what I would like to leave with you. What would you like to leave with me? I would like to leave with you my my testimony of my Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. And as well as the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. Okay. Um, obviously it's easy for you to look at me and say I was born in this gospel, I was raised this way, that's why I... I was born as a Christian, so yeah. uh, you know, I get it. Yeah, and so honestly I, I didn't know the Book of Mormon was true when I, when I came out and started being a missionary. Okay. But I, reading it every day and doing as, as the promise says to met to ponder on it and pray about it okay. i received my my witness that the book of mormon is the word of god okay and i so it's interesting our go, go ahead i, I want to give you respect and finish go ahead yeah no I, interrupted you. I, I would there i know without a doubt in my mind that there is no man that could, that could write this book mm -hmm. i know that joseph Smith didn't write it and that he indeed received this through okay. divine revelation and through the angel and like you already know okay so, so our, our, you know, you would say read the Book of Mormon and understand this book through the Book of Mormon, and I would say read the Bible and then go to it. Because if you're spending time in that book every day, why would you not spend time in this book? I do. I spend time in both every day. I mean, I, but but this book preceded the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Okay. So take the time to read what this book has to say, and I would just challenge you to really understand. For instance, the book, of, uh, the book of Romans, and then go back to that. When you have this down pretty well, I mean, obviously, it's a huge book. Yeah. I'm still learning. We're all, I've been studying for 48 years or something. And then go back to it and compare the two. Always do a compare. And if there's anything in that book that contradicts this, go with this. God bless you. Hey, I appreciate you talking. You're very respectful, and I, I really do appreciate it. Taking the time. Hey, go go bother the uh, the Jehovah Witnesses. I'm going to in a minute. All right. You take care.